Hi, I'm Jody Barrows. I'm the author and creator of the Square in a Square technique, where you don't ever have to worry about perfect points and cutting and sewing all those triangle units. Years ago when I started sewing and making quilts, I was really frustrated with all those triangles. And that's how the square and a square system was invented. I just had to find a more perfect way. I wanted speed and accuracy, and I wanted quality and quantity of quilts. You'll learn how to make beautiful quilts like these without ever cutting or sewing a triangle unit. You'll learn how to do the pattern adapting and see how easy it is to use the option charts. Also, you'll learn how to use the new four patch and nine patch tools of the square and a square system. Now this is the square and a square technique, and it all starts with this little square right here. Just a square in the middle, any size that you want, and strips surrounding all four sides. Now I have a quick, speedy method of accomplishing what I call the basic square, and we'll get into that in just a second. But I want you to remember throughout the whole video here that all of the options start out just like this. You need a basic square, and then the different ways you trim it with your square and a square ruler, you get the different triangle units that we call options. And with those options, you can make almost any quilt that you'll ever want to make out there in the quilt world today. So the first thing you must do is cut your strips and squares. Make sure that your squares are as accurate as possible because this is where all of your sizing comes from. Make sure you use a good quality cutting ruler that is very accurate and that you take your time in cutting the squares. Now the strips, sometimes in the patterns we may tell you that a strip is one and an eighth or two and seven eighths. Now the strip size can always be bumped up a little bit. Two and seven eighths is a little bit difficult to cut. It is much easier to cut a three inch strip. So remember, the strip sizes can be bumped up to an easy measurement, but the center square must always be exactly the size that is required to make the unit that size. So the first thing we need to do is have our squares and strips cut, and you can see here how I've started the strip in the sewing machine. I've kept the selvage on there. We'll trim that off later. We don't need to take the time to do it now. Remember, everything I do, I do for speed and for accuracy. And if you'll learn to sew this way, whether you're doing the square in a square system or any other technique out there in your quilting, it will really save you a lot of time. The other thing that I do is that I always use a little scrap runner in my machine. I never leave it empty. And as I go through the sewing process of the basic square, you'll see me use this little scrap runner a lot. And this helps keep your machine running. It keeps it threaded. You don't have to worry about trimming all those little tails off. And your bobbin won't be wadding up all of your threads and fabrics. It just keeps you in a go motion. And it makes you very accurate and very speedy to use the scrap runner. So start your strip in the sewing machine, and I always like to sew a little bit on here. Once again, it makes sure that everything is running properly, and if something is a problem, it's not on the pieces that go in the quilt, because all of this can be trimmed off. I also want to make sure that I'm sewing a nice, scant fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now, some of you may not be familiar with a scant seam allowance. Your fourth of an inch is your seam allowance, and that's what you must sew when you're doing quilting with anything out there, anyone's patterns or designs. The seam allowance is a fourth of an inch. But all the professional instructor, instructors teach you to use a scant fourth of an inch. And a scant measurement means just a thread or a whisper of two smaller. So just a little bit smaller. Don't go too small. Don't go 3 16 It's just not a full fourth of an inch seam allowance. And I always start going on my strip just a little bit to make sure everything is running correctly. And then you just simply place the squares on the strips. Now notice how I have the right side of the fabric up on the strip and the right side of the square down. And you'll just continue to sew these on and making sure that you have your scant fourth of an inch. I like to sew all the way through to the bottom of the square. And if you have an automatic needle down position on your machine, this is great to always stop with your needle down. Then you just pick up the next square and you place it right on the strip. Now notice I did not stop and move my fabric. I did not stop and lift up the foot here on my machine. I kept it down and I'm just continuing to sew. So this is really very simple and very painless. And you can also tell here how I have about a finger uh, area here that separates the squares. The more you separate the squares on the strip, the more fabric you'll use. See, it doesn't do any good to put the square this far down on the strip. 
Go ahead and scoot it up a little bit, but don't make it too close. Soon we'll want to cut these apart and separate, and if you have them really close together, then it takes more time to cut the squares apart. Now remember, everything I do, I do for speed and I do for accuracy. So pay close attention to these little tips and hints, and you'll be running very smoothly. Just continue to sew that square on the strip. Now depending on how many of these you need, if you're following any of the patterns from any of the Square in a Square books, we always tell you exactly what size of square and what size of strip you need to make those units the size that are required for that pattern or that design. If you're doing your own pattern adapting or drafting, which we'll talk about in this video how easy it is to adapt all of these Square in a Square units to other designs. But first, before we get into all of that pattern adapting, let's get back to our basic square and cutting the options. Now remember, everything starts out just like this with the basic square, our square in the middle with the strips on the side. And our first step we have done, we have our square on what we call side one. Now if you're following one of the patterns in the book, it may tell you that you need 20 of these for your quilt, or maybe as many as 140 if you're making a large quilt and this particular unit is in there multiple times in each block. So you would go ahead and continue putting squares on your strips all the way to the end. Now you can see a little bit here how we just continue to add the squares to the strip. You can work with scraps, fat quarters, or cut your pieces the full uh, width of your fabric from selvage to selvage. After I have all of side one on, no matter how many squares I'm working with, whether it's just a few or a lot, like 140, I continue to sew this square on my strip, and this is what we call side one. Now whenever you're ready to take your strip out of the machine, remember I don't ever leave it empty. So if I still have some strip left and I am completed with all of my squares for that size and that color, then all I do is just snip the strip off. Now the next step of getting our basic unit is we want to go to side two. So this was like our first strip here. Now we want to go to the opposite side and sew our second strip on. And this is also a long strip. So you would pick up the color and the width that you were looking for and once again just start it in your machine. Go ahead and sew to the end of the strip that's in there and then see how I just start the next strip right up in there. Once again I sew a little bit to make sure everything is running perfectly. Then I want to take these that are, have fallen off the back of the machine and bring them around. Notice I did not take these out and then start the strip. I left them in the machine. Now I want to go back and grab it right where it's come off the back and just make a little snip and then bring it around and lay it down. See, I'm not messing with the squares. I'm not playing with the fabric to distort it. I have not gone back to the tail. If I had 140 of these that I had sewn and they were all on the back of my machine, I don't want to go all the way back to that tail, to that very first one I started. The one I need to start with when I sew on my second strip is the one right here that just came off the back of the machine. Now I have a little story about a snake that I tell my students in class to help them remember. If you ever choose to pick up a snake, you must pick him up by the head. So this strip with all of these squares on it is your snake and the head is right here closest to you and the tail is way down there at the end. Now when you pick up a snake, the reason why you have to pick him up by the head is because you don't want him to bite you. If you pick up your strips by the tail, the snake will bite you and you'll have to rip your strips out and you'll have to start over again. So just remember, pick it up by the head and bring it around and lay it down. Notice how nice and neat and even the squares lay on strip number two. And you just continue to sew, making sure once again that you have that nice scant fourth of an inch seam allowance. And just continue to sew your squares to the strip and this is what we call side two. Remember side one and side two are long strips. When we get ready to go to side three and four, we will use short strips. Now also notice how I'm not having to open the strip up. See, there's plenty of room here. It will not get caught. Leave it folded together. Keep it nice and neat. When you do it this way, they'll all be sewn on there evenly, so when you get ready to cut them apart, you don't have them all, all gobbled up together to where you can't tell for sure what you've really got. This will help keep you nice and neat. And continue to sew strip two on all the way down. And when you get to the end of your strip and you need another one, you just pick up another strip and start it in the machine and continue to sew all of those squares to the side. So let's look at our little pieces that we have here. 
So here's our squares on strip number one, side number one. Then we put these in the machine and we put the second strip on the side and they look like this. Then after we have them in this order, we can go in and trim these up and cut them apart and press them open. So you can do this with your rotary cutter on your mat with a ruler or you can just simply take your scissors and separate these. See, most of the time in the quilt world, you have to go in with your rotary cutter or scissors and square these up perfectly, nice and neat and even. And if I have 140 of these squares, that's going to be a cut here and a cut here, which makes 280 cuts to separate these. But with the square and a square system, we only have to separate them one time. We do not have to go back in and square up these edges. And so that saves you in cutting time. Instead of doing double 140 cuts, you only have to do it once. Now once we have these cut apart and separated, you can see how we need to open these up to press. Now I like to just stack them up on my ironing table with my strips on the top and my squares on the bottom. And what we want to do is just run the iron across the top. Now remember we're pressing, not ironing. You don't want to distort your fabric. After I have set the seams like this, then I just slide the strips open. And in the instructions in the book and in the ruler, I talk about pressing the seams open. And if you're a seamstress and have been a garment sewer, you might think that I'm talking about pressing the seams open here. But I'm not. I'm talking about pressing the strips apart, pressing them open, pressing the option open. See, your center square is the center of your option, and that's where everything comes from. So we're pressing the option open. We always want the square to be flat. We always want the seams to go away from that square to the strips. And you can see here how I just continue to place it on top and keep building and pressing right here off of my stack. So it just continues to press the one underneath as I put the new one on top to press. Now after you have side one and two on, have them cut apart and pressed, you're ready to go into your machine and add the short strip to side three and four. See, this is the completed basic square, and this is our first step right here. So the next thing we'll do is cut short strips to sew on side three and four. Now when I do that, I like to just kind of fan fold the piece of fabric in my hand. And of course, your strips must be the accurate width that your pattern has called for. And let's just play like this is the one I want to go on the side. <clears throat> I like to put my strip across the square, not across the whole unit. If you do it across the whole unit, you'll wind up making your strips way too long. Your work is not as accurate and you use a lot more fabric. So go across what you're actually covering and what you want to cover is the center square. See how I have just a little bit of fabric, not more than a fourth of an inch, hanging off of here and here. And sometimes people say, oh, that's the seam allowance. Well, yeah, a fourth of an inch is a seam allowance, but this is a cut square, so the seam allowance is already included in there. So if my center square is three, my strips have to be at least three inches to cover that square. But if I take the time to cut all my strips a perfect three inches to cover the side, I have to take a lot of time when I'm sewing them through the machine to make sure that they are perfectly on that square. And remember, everything I do is about speed and about accuracy. So we don't want to take more time than necessary to create that beautiful quilt. There's so many designs out there that we all want to make. We want to get to the next project. So let's do it quickly and do it simply. Just lay it across the center of the square leave a little bit hanging off of each side, and see how I just fan fold those in my hand. Now, I work with a lot of scraps. A lot of my favorite quilts are scrap quilts. So when I first started doing the square and a square system, I was working with scraps, always working with little strips of fabric like this. So I got used to just fan folding it in my hand and cutting my folds to get my short strips to sew across side three and four of my square. But you can go in with your rotary cutter and with your mat and actually cut chop, 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 multiple layers that you need. And remember, they don't have to be exactly perfect, perfect and accurate because when you get these sewn on your square and you place the square in a square ruler over the top of your basic square, you trim this up perfect. I like to tell my students that it's kind of like making a pie crust. We do not make a perfect circle pie crust to go into a pie pan because we could never make it perfect to fit that pan every time. And in a quilt, you have to repeat the same thing over and over again to go in the blocks and then make the 20 blocks for the quilt. 
With a pie crust, you make it a little bit bigger, you place it in that round pie pan, and then you trim it up perfect to fit that pan. And that's kind of what we're doing with our square and a square system. We put these strips on the side, and then we let our square and a square ruler trim these up perfect to be a basic square and a square, to be a flying goose, a half square triangle, and all of the other options that you're not even familiar with that make up all the quilts out there. Beautiful, beautiful triangle units are all of these options. We have one through 20 that we're going to go through step by step and teach you how to do the sewing and the cutting, how to use the charts in the book, and even do pattern adapting so that you can adapt any beautiful quilt to the square and a square system. It's so simple, it's so easy, it's quick, it's accurate. You'll have quilts that are quality quilts and you'll have quantity of quilts. So let's go ahead and get to the next step and put step side three and four on. Remember, I just folded those in my hand. They just have to cover that square. Now we wanna sew them in the machine. So go ahead and finish what you have in your machine. Just go ahead and sew through the strip or you can cut it off. And if you wanted to take all of this out, then this is a good time to use that scrap runner. Remember, I don't ever want to leave my machine empty. I always have a piece of fabric in it. My machine is just happier when it has fabric. And then I'll just snip that off. Now I am ready to go in and sew side three and four on this strip. Now in some of the quilt designs, the color, or in all of them, the color is very, very important where you put it on which side of that square. So when you're reading the instructions and following the patterns, pay careful attention to where you're putting a certain color and on which side you're doing it. Some of the patterns are extremely important for that to happen. Now, remember, this one I trimmed up perfect, so I want to make sure that I start over here right on the edge. But on some of the squares, we have that little bit hanging off, which you can kind of see here and here. So make sure you scoot over enough. On the next one that I place in the machine, I'll make sure that's on that side so that you can see how to do it. See how I start in the machine just a little bit, sew a few stitches, and re let the machine do as much work for you as you can. Let it hold your fabric. That way you have two hands free to put this in the machine. So many times we are used to putting these pieces in our hand and putting them together perfectly like this and then sewing them through the machine. And that takes a lot of time. And with the square and a square system, we don't have to do that. Start your basic square in the machine and then just place your strips over the side making sure that it's all lined up nice and neat. Remember, all of your accuracy comes from this center square and your seams. Now, for a beginner, it's hard to sew that nice fourth of an inch seam allowance, but with a square and a square system, you'll get perfect points, even if you're a little ice skatey around when you sew that seam on there, because the ruler and the system does the work for you. Now, the next one, see how I just sew clear through the unit? This next one here has this little edge hanging off. So notice how I've started with my foot right over here, kind of bumped in a little bit because I want it to line up with the square. The square is where all of the accuracy and the sizing comes from. This right here will be trimmed off when we place our ruler on there to trim the different options, the different triangle units of the square and a square system. Once again, place your little short strip on the side and just continue to sew all the way down. Now I don't stop and take all of these out, I just keep feeding them through the machine. And basically side four is exactly the same way. You have your short strips and you just turn them around and sew side four on the other side. So let's look at our pieces here. Remember we started out with our side one and then we added side two, then we trimmed up our ends and separated our pieces and pressed them open. Then we went in to sew side three and here you can see the short strips on side three. And once again, we just chain all the way through all of these pieces. And you can put as many through your machine as you want and then stop, cut apart, and press. <clears throat> After we have side three on, then we're ready to do side four. See how we've just kept these all together, adding side three and four through the machine. So when they were at this step and all of them had side three, that's when we would go in and do step, step four or side four. We would just start it in the machine, just like this, keeping them all in that chain strip, put our little square, our little strip on top, and just continue all the way down the side so that they would look like this. After you have this completed, then you're ready to start cutting them apart and pressing them and trimming them into the option that you need. 
Now once again, if you're following the patterns in the book, they tell you exactly what size of squares and strips that you need to make that quilt. And if you're doing pattern adapting and you're making an, a flying goose or a half square triangle to fit another design, the charts in the book help you know what sizes of squares and strips to work with so that when you get them all cut apart, they'll be perfect in the size that you need them to be. Now after you have these all sewn together, you're ready to press open just like we did on the other ones. Remember you want all of your seams to go out away from the square and your center square to be nice and flat. What you have seen me do right here is the sewing of the basic square. And from this basic square, we can cut this into any of the different triangle units and make almost every quilt that there is out there in the quilt world to make. So we're going to jump right in with option one here in just a minute and show you some beautiful quilts, show you the trimming and the cutting, and also show you how to use the charts in the books so that you can make them any size. Now wasn't that great? It's so easy, just squares and strips sewn together. Thank you.